Hey, good morning friends, or afternoon or evening. It's so wonderful to have you join me today. I'm on the tired side and it's Sunday evening, Mother's Day, and I'm um, prepping today's uh, little devotion for you for Monday morning. Now, I don't know what we're going to do for a devotion yet, whether we're going to be moving into the book of Isaiah or into another one of the shorter prophetic books. The reason for that is I'm not sure, I just haven't thought about it in great detail. I'm not sure if I want to bite off Isaiah right away since we're doing that in our sermon series. Um, now, that being the case, I'll have some more time to think about that tomorrow. But today I thought, well, why don't we do something short and interesting and devotional for Mother's Day? And I thought, well, what would be fun would be to think about where Scripture uses God and uses the symbolism of motherhood for God. Now, we're very comfortable with God as Father, aren't we? God the Father. I mean, it's the definitive character trait of the Father in the Trinity. So we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we see that the Holy Spirit emanates from the Father and the Son, and the Son emanates from the Father, the only begotten of the Father, and that the Holy Spirit emanates from both the Father and the Son. So we have this... Um, dynamic relationship within the Trinity that defines itself in terms of Christ's father, no, the Father's fatherhood and the Son's sonship in, in that whole relationship. And so we're taught to define ourselves as sons of the Father and daughters of the Father. Now, but yet in Scripture, in several places, that image of motherhood is used for the Father as well. For In fact, Jesus uses that language himself imaging himself as a mother in a way to to the church and to um, Jerusalem. And so I thought we'd take just a short look at a couple of verses about that. Uh, and why? Because it's neat, one. Two, because um, there's plenty of examples for us as fathers of God as a father. So we have this archetype of who the father is, and we have the story of the prodigal son to tell us as fathers how we should love um, and how we should teach our children. We have the Father and the Son in their own relationship to show us the way the Father loves the Son and to show us how we need to teach our children to prioritize obedience and compassion in the same way that the dynamic love of the Father and the Son shows us that. So that's that. Now let's think about for mothers, what does the character trait of God as a mother speak to us? How does it speak to us, perhaps? For better or worse, so the first one that comes to mind, since I'm a chicken guy, is um, Matthew 23, 37. And Matthew 23, 37 is Jesus looking out on Jerusalem. And he says of himself, um, which is neat into itself, um, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often I would have gathered your children together as a hen gathered her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Now there's this beautiful image here, right? Jesus is remembering the number of times he sent prophets, something in our prophetic series we can get, to Jerusalem to warn them and to turn them away, to say, come back to me. Find your rest in me. Find your peace in me. And they refused. So... Um, we get the real sense of the mother's longing for her children to return here. Something we talked a little bit about to this on Sunday as well, that sense that um, Eve would have sorrow in her heart. Now, that's one way where God shares the sorrows of mother, and that's an important one, isn't it? That God relates to and shares your sorrows for your children and in their distance. And in, um, it's important for all of us to hear that, quite frankly. Now, the other one I want to look at is one of my all-time favorite psalms. It's psalm 131. Now, Psalm 131 imagines us as children in relationship to God. And it teaches us to relate to God as our provision and as our caretaker. And the image that it sets up is that of a weaned child. Now, mothers, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding of this is a weaned child is one who has learned to eat a little bit more grown-up food. They're on to the oatmeal and the plablum and the, the malto meal, if you're brave enough to give them malto meal. 
and uh, the crackers and the Cheerios even maybe. So all that to say, they're on to solid food and they are more contented than a child that just uh, that doesn't, that isn't weaned and just longs for milk. So that's the image that's here, is a child who has learned to trust. And so the psalmist invites us into that image, saying that God is the one who feeds us and cares for us, and we can be as weaned children, trusting him, knowing where our meal comes from. O oh Lord, it says, my heart is not lifted up, my eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great or too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul, like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, trust in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Now here the psalmist invites us again just to find our rest in God's character and in his promises. To know that he's the one who's provided for us in the past. past. You know this for a fact as a child because you've been fed. You've, you've been provided for. And so too have we been provided for by the Lord. So we can take that history of past provision and say, if it was true then, it is true now. I will allow my soul to be quieted. I will be at rest. I will trust in the Lord to be provider for me. And so those are the two texts that I thought we'd look at today. So that's two things. I guess we can relate to God as one who calls us to him as a mother hen summoning her chicks cheep 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 come to me come to me um, we can see the words of the prophets and the word of the scriptures and those those moves movements of the spirit in our lives and the even the um, the conviction of the Holy Spirit is being God summoning us to find our our refuge in him to be that great hen to wrap us in his arms or his arms um, and uh, then we can also say that when we, div when we are longing and when we feel alone and when we feel like maybe that God has forgotten us, we can remember that we are as wean children to him. He has provided for us in the past. He will continue to provide for us. We are in his arms. So we can trust in him and rest in him. I hope that you find your rest in him today. And if he's calling you, if you hear that voice in your heart, if you hear that voice in scripture, that summoning to return to him, be quick to do so. You were made to belong in his arms. Nothing else will satisfy. Nowhere else will you find the rest that you find in him. Let's pray. Lord, we praise you this day for your love for us, for your mercy, for your provision, for your words of warning and your words calling us to hope and peace in you. We praise you for all of these things. Great Lord and King, go with us today. Give us strength and peace. And I pray, Lord, for Lise, and I pray, Lord, for Olivia, and for Craig, and I pray, Lord, for um, Jamie, and I pray, Lord, for Aurora, particularly for Aurora. Um, and Lord, we pray for your best for each of them. For Lise, we pray, Lord, that um, if you're going to take her today, that you would take her in a peaceful and gentle way. And we do pray, Lord, that she would rest in your arms and she would know your peace and that soon again she would walk and run and leap as you call her to your presence. We praise you, Lord, for the promises we have in you. Amen. Well, friends, thank you for joining me today. Uh, don't forget, uh, we have our Zoom prayer meeting tonight at 6 p.m. God bless you all. Bye-bye.